Welcome. I'm Beth Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I made this fun shaker card with products from Stampin' Up. I sell these products and also a few items to make crafting more convenient. I have the free detailed directions for this project on my website. I also have links to the products that I used. And if you click those links, it'll take you to my online store at Stampin' Up. You'll see where to find all of that at the end of this video, so don't worry about taking notes. It's time to put stamps, ink, and paper together. I'm using the Seaside Wishes bundle. This comes with Seaside Wishes and the Seaside Wishes embossing folder. True confession. I have two sets of dies. Um, because when I was opening it up, I don't know what happened in my embossing folder. The only thing I can figure out is it went out with the trash. So don't lose that because you can't buy the dies or the embossing folder separately. They come together. But sometimes it's nice having double dies, so that's okay with me. When you have hybrid embossing folders, you actually have three in one product and if you combine it with the stamps you can stamp by itself you can emboss by itself and you can stamp and emboss and cut out by itself or you can use the dies by themselves and we're kind of using all three of those on this project I decided also this is an optional to use the citrus blooms it has these cute little blossoms that I thought looked like starfish. I've gone with kind of a monochrome look. Got my envelope, of course. I have this basic beige card base, which is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I have a, two pieces of the same cardstock, but it's kind of cut at a funny place. I wanted a, a, as large a layer as possible, and so I wanted a tiny, tiny border here and a pretty small border here. Well, the, the card base is the same. These basic beige are three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So that's just one eighth of a bit less than the four by five and a fourth that is my common one and the crumb cake is just a little bit larger than that just an eighth of an inch larger so it's four and an eighth by five and three eighths the second one i cut at the same size just to reduce confusion and i have a little tiny bit of soft seat foam and a little bit of very vanilla. And I also have a piece of window sheet. This window sheet is three and a half by four. And I said to tear this layer about an inch from the side. And I just want to be sure that we don't get too close. So. So I'm going to take a pencil and on the back of this piece, I'm going to just mark here because I want to be sure and um, not go past there. And so I'm just going to use my scissors to cut about three fourths of an inch. Just get it started. And I want to get it started enough to get my fingers in there. So, and this is the back, so this is the front, and I want to tear up. Make sure I'm far away from that. I definitely don't want to be tearing this in a straight line. And I'm about three-fourths of an inch. Pretty 
pretty far away from that border. And I don't want to leave that cut edge, so I do want to tear here as well. I am re-recording a few bits of the video that I did earlier because I learned some things that I want you to avoid. This is the original card that I did. I put the foam on this side of the card, but then when it was time to put the sand in there, I had no way of knowing how much sand to put in here and also how to position it so that the sand that was here stayed in place. As a result, I ended up putting way too much sand in, and it was nice because you could see the sand up here, but it didn't really close all the way. So what happened was I got sand on the foam and I had leaks. So I don't want you to do it that way. Go ahead and tear out that part but save this torn out part and careful, and so that it's positioned around here, carefully remove the frame without moving the center part. And then draw around. And if you leave a little bit of space, that's a good thing because you don't want this line to be showing. And if you're kind of a little ways away, it won't. But having this line here does a couple of things. It allows us to put the frame close to here and have the sand on this layer instead of on this layer. So now, just like before, we're going to emboss these. Another suggestion I have is that we're going to eventually want to have these layered like this. So I'm putting the, this uh, basic beige layer right on the line here and pretty much center it so that we know where the bottom of that is going. And then we're going to put the crumb cake layer and we want about an eighth of an inch border around the basic beige, so I'm putting that down a little bit and rolling that through. Now we've got our embossed crumb cake. You're going to need about two foam strips. But it's really important that you don't allow any gaps in this foam strip. So I'm actually pushing this foam strip up against the first one. And you can go around the corners a little bit. And you will have a couple of little bits. Save those. Pushing this up against there. And I can push this so I have pushed those up against each other and I want to be sure to press that into the crumb cake cardstock because I want to get a good seal there but I can also double up here in the corners because that's where it's most likely to escape from so you can put another couple of layers if you've got like this is a big area if it's not a big area there you can put it on the outside too, just to make it a little bit harder for that sand to escape. I want to position with the big sand dollar on the bottom. 
and the big sand dollar is going to be on the bottom of this one. And I still have not put my window sheet on here. And you can use Terran tape, you can use um, stamp and seal. This gap isn't going to be where your leakage is going to be because the window sheet should adhere nicely to the foam strip. And so I'm going to use the stamp and seal plus. I don't want to press hard on this because I don't want it to flatten my embossing. Again, you could use tear and tape there. And so I just need to put this here. So then my sand is going to be between the crumb cake layer and the window sheet here. Now, I can't tell you exactly how much sand you need because it depends on how big you tore your hole. If you've got a little hole and you put in a teaspoon of sand, it might be too full. And that one that I did for the uh, first sample that you may see in this video, it was actually bowed up. There was quite, kind of a mountain of sand here. For me, it seemed like a, a teaspoon was about right. And so you can actually push this pretty flat and see what it's going to look like. So that might be about the right amount of sand. There are, There is more room for sand down here, so it'll probably fall down a little bit lower. If I were really making this card, I would add those little um, sea stars and the little bits of berry vanilla that makes, to me, look like seashells. So I would put all of that stuff here at this point. Now, the next tricky part is you want to take off the backing without getting any sand on the foam strips. So you want to hold, hold the card steady. Don't let that sh shake around too much. Okay, I want to put that large sand dollar in the bottom and the large sand dollar on the bottom. And now I can see what I'm doing as far as placement of where this is going. And again, you want to get a good seal. You don't want that sand to escape. And I've got a nice amount of sand in here. And now you can go on to decorate it. And I'll start that part of the video again. For my shaker, I used playground sand. Now we live near, fairly near the beach, so I could have gone to the beach to get some sand. Um, although I think technically that's not legal to steal sand from the beach. Um, maybe you live near, by a river that you can get some sand. I had a sandbox for my grandkids who are getting a little big for sandbox. So I took some sand and that came from Home Depot originally and who knows how dirty or clean that is so I what I did was I actually took that sand and I sifted it to so I had kind of the larger pieces and then I washed all the leaves and things from it and then I had it wet and I put it in the microwave for about a minute and so now I've got some nice shaker sand. Okay, now I'm going to stamp my sand dollar and I just want a light color. So I'm using crumb cake. I guess I could have used the basic beige, but I want to stamp off on some scratch paper. And then I want to snip this off. So now I'm going to do some stamping with pecan pie on the rest of this basic beige. And I'm going to stamp at least two of these little sea stars. You could do three if you want. And 
and one of the one of the big ones. And you may want to stamp your envelope as well. So I'm going to do the C star. I'm going to also stamp on the inside of the card. And I like having that kind of hanging off the side. So maybe I'll do that again here. Maybe I'll do some pebbles with the crumb cake. Look at all these little... to have a little background there. And we'll put a little bit of the sand. I want to also stamp my greeting. And there's some really nice greetings on here. I'm using sometimes the simplest things mean the most. But you could also do love you. You could certainly do another small greeting if you'd like. And I want to be way on the end of this. This is on the berry vanilla. And I did stamp with pecan pie. And now I'm going to do some die cutting. So I'm going to be cutting out, you could actually cut out all three of these, but I wanted this small one. And if you place this on here, it actually kind of, if you press, it actually kind of snaps into place. But I also want that to match with my stamped image. Now, I don't know if you can see this, there's these three notches and then one over here. There's that bump. Now make that match here. There we go. So I want to line that up as if I were going to die cut. And I just want to put the adhesive. Oops. Got it moved off a little bit. So I want the label, the logo on the top, and I want to put this in here and get it to kind of snap in. Oops, I let this move a little bit. And I'm going to close that up and roll this through the die cutting machine with that same with the same sandwich so I've just got the big thick number one platform and the gray and the first time I did this cutting and embossing at the same time it terrified me I thought it was going to cut up my embossing folder but it doesn't so if it didn't get bumped out of the way too much. This should almost look like a real sand dollar. Very pretty. So for die cutting, I also need the number two die cutting plate. And I need a cut up plate. And I'm going to cut my C stars. And I'm also going to cut that very vanilla piece. I'm going to cut the very vanilla piece with this small, and because I have two sets, I can put these on here. The big C star is pretty easy to match up because it's got two pieces that have kind of a bend to them. The little ones are a little trickier. There is a right and a wrong way to put them. And so what I've done is just kind of spin it around 
one way at a time until it really looks like it matches pretty well. This is almost right, but not quite. Yeah, that's it right there. So I've got those. I also want to get that piece of uh, that piece of soft sea foam. Now you can. I'm going to do some seagrass or seaweed, however you want to call it. Let's see how much I can get on here. Um, you could do it with just three pieces of seaweed. That would be just fine. You could run it through twice. So I've got my sea stars and I don't know if that's the bottom of a sand dollar or coral and roll this all through of course you could do it a little bit at a time to make it easier sometimes trying to load them all on causes more trouble than it's worth And to be honest with you, I wanted little scraps of seashells. And so it was actually the stuff that's in between this that I wanted. So don't throw this away. Okay. And then I just want to punch out my greeting. And we used to sell these hole punches, but you can get them anywhere. You could actually use standard quarter inch punch. I want to add a little depth to this seaweed, seagrass. So I'm just using a sponge dauber on the edges. Okay, my other two cards for this month's class were pretty simple, quick and easy. This one's got a lot of pieces. So let's kind of take inventory. I've got my little bitty pieces of shell and those sea stars. I have my card base. I have the embossed layer and this part with the window sheet in it. I have some, I have, you're gonna want at least one of the little starfish. I've got three and one of the big they're technically sea stars. And I have my seaweed. So the first thing I want to do is put my shaker stuff in here. Now I just want to arrange all my sea stars and stuff wherever I want. I kind of liked having these go up the side. So I'll do that again. There are a couple of long ones, so I'm going to put those on first. I do not want these exactly the same. I don't want them to be matching exactly. So I'm going to put this one down low. And this one up higher. And of course, where you put these does not matter whatsoever. I'm going to put this, these kind of overlap a little bit. I don't want it to go beyond the card base. And then I put linen thread on the directions, but I'm using linen thread in a different box. So I'm using some of the Baker's Twine Essential Pack, which has um, crumb cake and very vanilla in it. So I just need a little bit. And I want this to kind of shake around a little bit too. 
So I'm just tying that string through here, pulling it through the loop. Probably should have given myself some more string to do this with, because I'm fumbling. And I'm just going to hold this up here with a glue dot. So I'm sticking it nicely to the glue dot. And I'm squeezing the glue dot to get that all around the baker's twine. And sticking it on here. And then I'm going to put one of these sparkle gems on it. And really any of these colors would be lovely. But I think I like these gold ones down here on here on this card. Of course I need to put the shaker on the card base. Make sure we've got that in the right place. Very small border on there. So we've got our card base and our envelope, and there you go. Here is the web address for this project where you'll find the free detailed directions and links for the products I used. Just click the links and you'll be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up! Click Home near the top of my page and you'll find lots of resources. Under Shop, you can find the products I offer to make crafting more convenient. How to get free products with my frequent shopper rewards and a link to my online store at Stampin' Up! Click Inspiration to scroll all my projects back to 2011, most with detailed directions and videos. Though the products in those older projects have been retired, you may find techniques, layouts, or color combinations to inspire you today. If you're new to stamping, you might want to look at the basics. You'll find how to cut card bases and layers, what's special about Stampin' Up! stamps, and some of my favorite tools. Under Organization, you'll find lots of free resources such as catalog tabs, labels and case inserts, color tools, and much more. You can take a tour of my craft wall. More organization means more time for stamping. You can learn about my Evernote notebook. I have a note for every current product that Stampin' Up! has for sale right now. And you can sort them all by the type of product. You can search just for the stamps. You can search just for the designer series paper. You can search for the phrase that you want or a, a, an image that you would like to use. You can search all the products that come in a particular color. It really makes finding just exactly what you want very easy. And you can create your own notebook and search through all of the things that you own to find just what you need. Come stamp with me here in Ventura County, California, or get the best deal of all and join my team of crafters. The team is called SIP Together and it stands for Stamps, Ink, and Paper Together. The team is made of crafters who want to save money on the products they buy share with a few friends, or start a Stampin' Up! business like mine. Be sure to subscribe to my website and on my YouTube channel. I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks for joining me. Talk to you soon.